In this final section, we will discuss moral hazard problems. Moral hazard is an asymmetric information problem that occurs after a contract is made in contrast to adverse selection. It is also known as principal agent or agency problem since it describes a scenario in which a principal delegates a task to an agent and then cannot observe if the agent fulfills the task in the interest of the principal. Much like adverse selection, moral hazard problems are common in many markets. For instance, shirking, that is, simply not doing a job, is a common problem in labor markets. Moral hazard is further common in both equity and credit markets. Starting with equity contracts, be aware that shareholders are principals who delegate the operation of a corporation to its management. It is in the owner's interest for a firm to be profitable because that's what stock grants, it grants profit shares. But owners cannot typically observe around the clock how well management is running the firm. Management, on the other hand, might have other priorities. For instance, management might be interested in maximizing salaries, throwing lavish yacht parties, or in the worst case, could be outright fraudulent, all of which would hurt the owner of the firm. Now, how do we deal with moral hazard? Generally, moral hazard problems are addressed by monitoring the agents. For instance, if you have a boss, they will occasionally check within, in with you to check that you're doing your work. In the case of equity arrangements, shareholders can and presumably should stay a little bit up to date with the available information about the firms, they should check financial statements, and so forth. However, especially if you're a small shareholder, much like in the case of adverse selection, such monitoring is expensive and it therefore induces a free rider problem. Again, governments help the informational situation somewhat. Typically, they have fairly strict disclosure requirements for publicly traded firms. This includes financial and other statements. Financial intermediaries specialized on stocks are also traders in information, as we had pointed out. And these include mutual funds and venture capitalists, especially. And again, financial intermediaries have a, an information providing role here. Unlike a stockholder, um, sorry, finally, there's a, a fourth solution to deal with asymmetric information problems of, of the moral hazard type quality in equity markets, and that is to simply use debt contracts instead. Why are debt contracts less subject to moral hazard problems? Unlike a stockholder, a lender only needs the firm to be profitable enough to pay off their contractual obligation. And that contractual obligation, as we had discussed previously, is senior to that of shareholders. So a lender simply takes on less risk than a part owner of the firm. This is one of the reasons why smaller and riskier firms tend to rely on debt and do not have access to stock markets. That, however, said, debt only reduces moral hazard problems. It does not eliminate them entirely. A borrower can still take excessive risks or act fraudulently. Now, in practice, once more, financial intermediaries are the primary source of monitoring borrower behavior. Collateral and net worth are once again important tools to prevent moral hazard. For one, as we had mentioned in the last video, they do act as a signal, they do act as a screen. But then by the same token, they also act to reduce moral hazard. If a borrower does not follow the terms of a loan, for instance, takes excessive risks or tries to, to basically embezzle some of the funds, they may be liable to provide collateral to the lender. That should reduce moral hazard behavior in the first place. On top of that, debt contracts are complicated legal documents, including covenants to discourage and encourage certain types of borrower behaviors, to protect the value of pledged collateral, and generally improve the informational situ situation for a lender. Together, adverse and selection moral hazards are the primary reason why most funds are exchanged with the help of financial intermediaries, rather than securities, which are typically only accessible to the larger corporations. As we will see, if the financial system does its job right, it benefits the allocation of saving and ultimately economic growth. However, there are still asymmetric information problems between the ultimate providers of funds like households and financial intermediaries themselves. Banking crises are often preceded by a deterioration in financial system asset quality associated with poor screening of borrowers, associated with risk-taking of banks or other intermediaries, and occasionally associated with outright fraud.